Okay, let's start with our uh, standing position and we'll take a few breaths up. Take an inhale. Oh, and an exhale. Good, and up. And exhale. And up. And let your hands rest on your thighs and round and lift and round. This is a way to wake up the back, but you're going to also feel that your inner thighs wake up a little bit. Now we're going to take a little rotation, right down, left down, right down. And you may notice you could get a little deeper as you're here. Now, when you come up this time, take a circle with your ribs. It's kind of like you're stirring the inside of a pot. Stir in a pot. Inhale. And exhale. Of course, we'll go the other way. You can move your back in all sorts of ways to wake it up. And then we're going to roll up. Then we need to go up and over like you're painting a rainbow. And up and over like you're painting a rainbow. Oh my goodness. Over. Now, when you're over on one side, stay, and we're just going to add rotation. And then go on the other. And add rotation. And then let's just do three big breaths up one more time. Up and exhale and up and exhale and then up. Now place your hands at your thigh, at your, uh, excuse me, fingertips at your head and you're going to, this is butterfly, and then you're going to uh, inhale and exhale. You can see how, I'll show you from the side, it's basically like a little swan for your upper back. You extend. It's going to wake up all those muscles around the shoulder blade and of course your legs are getting warmed up but if you prefer not to be in this squat you can do this standing all right girls we're going to go all the way up and then just give a little shake this is that arm sleeve blowing in the wind like you're hanging clothes on the clothesline four three two and that ought to feel like a pretty good warm-up. We are going to lift up our heels on this next one so that our ankles get a little bit of a warm-up. Now, even though we're lifting our heels, the knees have to stabilize, so you're going to feel like they're getting some stability. The low back, it could go into lordosis, so you want to keep the abs gently pulling the ribs down. So everything's starting to wake up. I like to just go through the whole hand, wrist, fingertips to wake up that body. Up. We know calves are so important for stability and for blood flow and um, knee health. And up. Oh, feels so good. Three. The whole body should be feeling a little bit warmer. Two. And one. Now we are going to take some squats. If you prefer not to take squats, you can continue with your calf raises or you can do some leg lifts like we do with the Pilates Degage where you point your leg out. The squat's going to be uh, heel heavy, knee soft, heel heavy, toe soft. It's like you're sitting in a chair and then you stand back up. Five. Six. Good. The arms are ahead of you, and what that does is help you counterweight the fact that your booty's going way back. So it it counterweights that uh, ability that because we don't want to hurt the knees while we're doing this. We want the glutes to be dominant. Now we are going to switch it up. You can feel your heart rate getting up too. You're going to sit back. <laughs> sit back. Now both feet. Think about they're 50/50 of your weight. 50 percent of your weights in each leg. So you're making sure you don't have a little um, imbalance. You want to feel 50-50, pelvis level, six, 
strong thighs, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Really good, come back up, and then let's do a little um, uh, 10 pounds, eight, nine, eight, seven, somewhere between five and 10. So somewhere between five and 10, there's one. We're gonna do a little bicep curl. So anything that you, yeah, basically it's biasing on the heavier weight. Two, three, so we did a little bit for the legs. We're gonna do a little bit for the arms and we'll mix it up. Get all these muscles strong. These are carrying muscles. Five, your wrists are neutral. That feels good for you. So if this doesn't feel good, you can also do these hammer style. Seven, your knees are soft. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now, up to five more if you'd like. So this is 16. If you're feeling tired, you can also rest. 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now we're gonna lower those weights down. 5, 4, 3, 2, and sway. This is a release of tension. 4, 3, 2, and 1. And then let's do a couple of lighter weights. We're going to do this little lateral raise. So it could be that you do two threes, two twos, two fours, two fives. Go out like a T. Knees are soft, neck is soft. Eight. And breathing 12 13 shoulders getting stronger 14 15 up to five more so see if you can gauge where you feel fatigue at the final repetitions but that your form's still good Let that down, take those weights down. Mm -hmm. And take an arm up and over. And then if you wanna add a little rotation, you can. Five, four, and up and over. Five, four, three, Inhale, and exhale. Grab a sip if you need it, and then we're gonna get uh, those same weights. There it is. Take a two, three, four, five pound weight, knees soft, and press forward, good, two, with not, no neck tension, just shoulders, three, four, good, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, keep going, 16, 17, and just do the best you can, 18, 19, one more, 20, let that down. I don't know if you guys can hear the thunder here, but it doesn't rain like this much here, so it's kind of interesting. I know you had five days of rain back home, but it doesn't happen much here, and I think it's like six in the morning. Yeah, it's pretty early for that. Five, four, monsoon season, three, two, and one. Now, let me show you this one without the weights, but it's gonna be an overhead tricep press. So you could take two lighter weights that we just had. That's what I'm gonna do. But you can also take a heavier one. I am gonna do both today. So this two, two smaller weights, and then you straighten your elbows. Two. Now because the arms are overhead, you want to have more tension that your ribs are pulling down and your pubic bone pulling up. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, back of the arm is so important, 19, 20, let that down, let that down, let that down. Now it's going to be a pat on your back and then let your hand help out. Lean over. and a pat on your back, and then lean over, and interlace, and lift, next up. Good. Now, um, back to a heavier weight, we're gonna do an upright row. Make sure that your wrists are safe on this one. In other words, just hold the weight how you need to. So I even have a slight cant so that my wrist is in line with my forearm if you need to. Neck is soft. Sixteen shoulders and biceps. Seventeen. Eighteen. Let your elbows be a little higher than your hands. And now leave them down. Now you're going to try to balance the best you can as you lift your heels. So we're doing calf raises like in the beginning, but with extra weight. Try to control the speed. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and lower those weights down. Good. Take an arm across and let your hand help it, and then add wrist rolls. And the other way. 
Take that arm across, add wrist rolls, and the other way. Good. Fingers push. Good. Just give a little cat stretch. Now reach up and a little gentle back bend. Inhale. And then exhale. Let that go. Grab a sip if you'd like. And we'll add on. Take a heavier weight. So there's an option here. You could take a heavier weight for an overhead tricep press. You know how we did it with two small weights? Now you can take a heavier. Or if you don't have a heavier weight, you can also do the two, two singles again. The triceps are really important. Yeah, so inhale, two. If you were to fall, usually the tricep muscles, what catches you if you put your arm out. It's nice to roll and uh, if you were to fall to roll and not land uh, like pick up sticks, five, six, but this muscle is super important for that. Neck is soft. Now up to five more if you can. If you're getting tired, just rest, 17, 18, or grab a lighter weight and finish out, 19. Now, that one comes down. Go over. With this one, cross your foot. All these lateral flexions are so important for back, shoulder, posture, breathing. Inhale. Yeah, you can even flip your hand. Nice, Michelle. That's right. And then to other side. Now you are going to stretch your, your foot over the other. It's like someone's pulling your arm. And add those nuances. So we're also keeping those muscles pliant. If you think about a, a, a leopard running or a Cougar running, you see their pliancy and elasticity. They don't land jaga with jarring. So that's what we want to keep, this breathing, this mobility, this elasticity, and then bring it up. Good, and just take a few circles, get some blood flow. Also, we're getting synovial fluid, which is the WD-40 of the joints. <sighs> nice. And then grab a sip if you want. We'll add on some more. Let's grab an elastic tubing or a Dynaband. And with the elastic tubing or the Dynaband, you're going to go overhead with both arms. And you're going to pull down with your exhale. Good. And we're not done with our hand weights yet. We're just going to mix things up. Five, six, seven, eight. Can't find your other Donovan gene. Yep. Shoot. Um, when you're ready, take a stretch here, arms open. Let the band down and find a place to do push-ups. I want to give Jean a chance to find her band or undo that knot, but we'll do push-ups, so we're working our arms still. So take your hands on the wall, your feet far back if you want. We're going to shoot for 20. Bend your elbows and straighten. Jean, we're doing some push-ups to give you a chance to find the band that doesn't have the knot in it. Ah, shoot. Let me know if you have any trouble finding them. I've got a couple extra here. I can mail you. Amazon generally has them. 
and six, seven, eight, nine. Now you can feel these are pretty effective after all the work we've been doing. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now interlace and lift up. Four, woo, I can feel those. Uh, you know we did a lot of triceps already, so that's also chest and triceps there. We're just taking a stretch. You can lean, oh my gosh, that's one of my favorites. And take a tricep stretch and lean. Mm -hmm. Nice, and then let that down. Come on down to the floor. Let's mix it up a little bit. Take your heavier weights. We're going to do some chest presses on the floor. So you see how we're just mixing things up with all our different tools. Now, when you're lying on your back, your feet are going to be on the floor. That way you have a safe place for your, um, your ribs are down and that way you have a safe place for your back. So take your hand weights and press them up so the two ends touch and then bend your elbows, press up, bend, press up, bend, press up, and bend, and five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 12, 13, 14, Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now you're going to take a full body stretch. Reach your arms, reach your legs, reach your arms, reach your legs. We'll go through your toes, we'll go through your fingers. And then take an inhale. And as you exhale, we're gonna take the same weight or slightly lighter and we're gonna do flies. So you wanna take your hand weights like there's a tree in front of you. Your feet are on the floor and you touch both ends and then you open like there's a tree. And Betty, you could put your feet on the floor and knees bent. Yeah, just to double check that your ribs are down on the mat. I didn't see any lordosis, but I just want to make it easier for your back. Now, when you exhale, there's a little abdominal pulling in sensation, like you're corseting your waist. Your hand weights do not touch the floor on this one. Your upper arm might, but your hand weights do not, you don't want to bend your elbows backwards. Five, four, three, two, One. Now, take a full body stretch. Five, four, three, two, 
and one. Now, for abdominals, see if you can use your abs to come up a vertebra at a time. Use your abs, use your abs, use your abs, use your abs. Good, we'll do that five times. Inhale, arms overhead, exhale. Use your abs, so I'm not just throwing the arms forward, I'm trying to encourage us to use our abs. Good, and then lower down. Nice, inhale, and exhale. Tuck the chin, peel up, three, four, and five. Nice job. Grab a sip if you need it. We're going to do a, um, a row with our bands. Now if you have handles, don't feel like you have to use your handles. The main thing is you need tension. So take one or two bands around your feet, cross the bands. Did you find a band, Miss G? You got it! Awesome! Yeah, anything works, right? Just something elastic. <laughs> Bend your elbows past your rib cage. That's going to give you a free weight option if that didn't work out. So what you're doing is feeling your rear deltoid, which is the back of your shoulder. I'm going to turn so you can see. You're feeling your bicep. Most important, your lats. Not most important, but the muscle that will be your primary mover. So you're gonna be tall, so you're working your muscles around the spine as well. Spine is tall, jawline can be parallel to the floor. This looks great. Um, everybody's pretty much doing it already, but you can pull your toes back as if your feet were on a wall. And what that does is help strengthen the muscles that prevent shuffling. So act like your feet are against a wall and they're flat up against the wall. So you're pulling your toes back. Pinky toe especially to make sure your feet are flat, pulled back. You exhale when you pull. Good. Exhale, pull. Big strong muscles. Now, we are going to let that down for a minute and just give yourself, I'm going to come in closer so you can see me, give your, make sure you see me, give yourself a little stretch. This is a stretch you can do anytime. Push out. Good. And up. And over. So good. And over. And then let that down. Grab a band, one is fine. Cross your straps. Take your elbows by your side. Now, if you don't have a handle, don't worry because you just need the tension. You can hold on to the tube or the band. Yeah, tube. This is external rotation, right? This is really important for shoulder health. It is more therapeutic in nature, so it won't feel like a big quad burn, but it will feel like these little muscles on the back of your shoulder are working. Keep your elbows glued, um, Jean, and just open up the forearm. Yeah, five, four, three, Two. Woo! Let that go. Take your feet soles together and take a little inner thigh stretch, a butterfly. If you need a sip, this is a great chance to get it too.
and then let your legs go long again. Take your band around your feet and you're going to be almost like you're hugging a tree backwards. You're going to reverse fly. My arms are just slightly lower than shoulder height. So I really like all these posterior muscles because we don't get enough, they don't get enough attention during the day. So what we really try to focus on is balancing out the body. So the front gets attention just because that's where our eyes are directing us, but the rear needs more attention when we're doing these sessions. So you can see that I bias that. I want us to have good posture. Uh, the muscles are strong in the back body, also builds that bone density. Whew, that should feel like it's working. Now this is a stretch called the rack. Put one hand back, fingers away, soften that elbow. One hand back, elbow soft, then lift your heart. You're not really hanging out on your arms. Let me turn sideways. Just using them. Oh, doesn't that feel good? Elbow soft. Ten. What we're doing for our recipe of posture is opening up the front body and strengthening the back body. But it's not just posture, it's also just functionality. It's so your shoulders don't hurt, so your neck doesn't hurt. Because when the upper back gets rounded, the head has to crank up. You've seen people that are really rounded and then their neck has to make up for that rounded upper back and they have to crank their neck up and they get headaches and neck aches. So we don't have to have any of that. Shake it out, let it go, let it go, let it go. Nice. And then we're gonna take another band exercise around the feet. Good. And you're gonna take a little X motion. So one arm will be higher than the other and then one arm will be lower. So then it can be kind of a broad X but you're still gonna feel these different fibers of your shoulders, the back shoulder, and you're tall. You can add that extra cue where your toes pull back like your feet are on a wall. Your exhale pulls your arms, but your neck is soft. Eight, seven, you can feel the back of the shoulders. Six, five, four, three, Nice job. Now let that go. Take the legs out like a T, oh, excuse me, a V, and head down. Release any tension. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, take another inhale, and then come back up. Nice job. Now sit any way you want. We're going to put that band around the back. And we're just going to take this little breaststroke type motion. So you go out and then in. You exhale out and in. You exhale out and in. And exhale out. It's like you're doing a breaststroke. Neck soft. Six, and grab the bands. Seven, eight, nine, 
Now reverse it. So go forward, two, shoulders are down the back, three, four, five, six, seven, looking good, eight, All right, take this band and stretch it behind you. Good, find another place, just one inch difference. Maybe one more place. Now, see if you can do forward and back five times. favorite stretches. One more. Good. Now let that band go and we're going to go out like a T and then turn. This is for the upper back rotation. This is also really important for posture. Lengthen as you inhale. way and exhale rotate. Now we're going to find a light weight. I would say that the most is five, but probably like a three or a four would be better. And then you're going to take your line on your side position. You could do a two, three, four, five. Uh, you're going to be on your arm. The weight is in the top hand. And you see how it's 90 degrees in the elbow? You got it, Michelle. One. Your cells know. This one is super important for shoulder health. This is the one they always give people in rehab for their shoulder. So we're doing it before prehab. Seven, eight, nine. Now you can take a couple more here. 11, you can take up to three more here. I don't want it to feel like you have to, it shouldn't be like you have to get out of alignment to do it though. 15. Now let's try the other side and if you um, want, you can use your arm like a pillow, but you can also use a pillow under your ear because you just want the arm to be the focus, not that your body, your body's in good alignment. Open the wrist, or open the elbow, wrist is neutral. Three, four, and keep your elbow glued, Miss Jean. Don't let the shoulder, don't let the torso roll back. There you go. I know it doesn't feel like you get as far, but it's a truer move. 11, good, keep the upper back still. 12, just the arm rotates. 13, good, Betty. 14, feel a difference in one versus the other. Now when you're done with the 15, take that weight out of there. Let's take a full body stretch on our backside. Take your arms overhead, stretch. Now, we're gonna take five of those roll-ups that we did earlier. I'm gonna face you a little bit. So for your abs, roll up each part of your back. One, roll down. Exhale, roll up. And roll down. You got it. Exhale with as little arm help as you can. It's your abs. And roll down. And two, and roll down. And one, and roll down. Now full body stretch, 
arms overhead, and then we're going to do some back work. So this is for posture. We're going to put our upper back on, or excuse me, we're going to put our belly on the floor and take our arms wide for the upper back. I may grab a sip here too if you would like. Pinky side of your hand. Oh, I didn't say it. Did I say roller? Uh, grab a roller, Betty. Yeah. And go up. Grab, yeah. And nice. And Michelle, you might want that closer to your hand side. See if that gives you more room. Yeah, so you don't feel jammed. Now inhale up. Inhale up. Nice. You'll feel your triceps. Stay up on this next one. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, lower. Now we're going to do it again. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and lower. One more time. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. All right, take a little breather. It could be that you do a child's pose or a puppy dog pose. You can use your roller if you want with your arms stretched out and your head dropping or rest your hands underneath your forehead. Now the opposite muscle group is abs, and we did work them a little already, but we're gonna work them just a little more. The roller comes on the other end of your shins. You're gonna have your toes pointed in, and your elbows down on the mat, your toes pointed in, and that way you roll out your shin muscle, not your shin bone. Now you're going to bend your knees like you're an inchworm and then straighten into plank. Bend your knees underneath you and then plank. And bend and plank. And bend and plank. And bend and plank. And six, seven, eight, nine. Recover for a moment. And we're going to do that again. So, um, but this time instead of bending the knees, we're going to lift our hips. So put your elbows down, lift your hips up, piking. It's like a dolphin in yoga. Two, three, four. You may have to adjust every now and then. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and recover. Now this is going to be more oblique, so your knees are going to be inchworming, but corner to corner. So go to plank, take your knees towards the left elbow, then go to plank, take your knees towards the right elbow, plank. So obliques, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and recover. Adjust your mat or anything you need to here. And then we're going to do pikes to the corner. Now your elbows are down. You're going to keep your knees long this time and lift up your hips towards the left corner. Then plank right corner, plank left corner, plank right corner. You'll have to adjust every now and then. That's okay. Five, four, three, two, Woo! Okay, grab a step. I wanted to save some time to roll out. 
So we're going to use those foam rollers to roll out our back, our upper back. I have prickly pear berries in my water today that we picked from the desert. Amazing. All right, we're gonna take an upper back roll. Your feet are on the mat. Your upper back gets up on the roller. Now you can flex like you're doing a slight ab crunch or you can extend. See what works for you. There's probably both work. You can also, I usually get a little free adjustment when I'm doing a little uh, back bend there. You can also deviate left and get more right shoulder blade area rhomboid or left. You can, if you put your elbows towards each other, you get more rhomboids because your scapula abduct. Again, you can deviate right and left. <sighs> Try five more. Four more, three more, two more, one more, and then take a sideways position, right ankle to left thigh, roll out a hip, glute, Piriformis. Yep. You're rolling out the side that you have in that stretch. Uh, Betty, roll out your other hip. So, yeah, there you go. It's not wrong. You're going to get benefit either way, but when it's stretched out like that, you do get a little bit more benefit rolling out the side that's in a stretch. That's how I give Thai yoga. I'll put people in a stretch and then do the myofascial release. Roll. Oh. Should feel therapeutic. You guys did great. Sometimes you feel more near that greater trochanter, that side hip. Sometimes you feel near the sit bone, near the sacrum, near the Ilium. Just get all in there. How about we try the other side and see what's going on? And then sometimes you don't even know there's a tight area that you didn't know about. Now we're going to take the side, so your IT, take your right elbow on the mat and take your, your elastic or whatever that's called, the, <laughs> the foam roller onto that side. Make sure to keep breathing. All this should be good for your uh, hiking knees as well. 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and let's try the other side. When you slightly rotate up, you're getting part of that outer hamstring, that lateral hamstring, that biceps femoris that crosses the hip and the knee that can create knee pain or hip pain if it's tight. When you deviate forward, you get that quad vastus lateralis. And when it's tight, that can contribute to some knee pain, so we're getting muscles and fascia that when tight can create joint pain. Good. Gene, any kind of angle you find will be good. All these angles are good. Can even roll up more quad a little bit and Betty you might like that because of what you told me with the hiking downhill so roll out that thigh the quads you can bend the knees and straighten them you can also turn them out like your Charlie Chaplin you can turn them in like your pigeon toed And just take a moment to roll out your lats. Just take armpit, kind of like you're rolling out the back side of your armpit. That's a, a lat attachment is really important for your shoulder health. Um, sorry, rolling out the lats and then also for your back. You may find on the back of your shoulder you have something. other side. Mm -hmm. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Ah, oh, awesome guys. All right, just take a moment to take literally thirty second rest on the roller with your head on one end and your sacrum on the other, and just enjoy. A posture stretch breathe here and it's almost like you're just letting everything we did assimilate right now just rest
Now, whenever you're ready, take a moment to come up to seated and let your hands come to your heart and just take these breaths as a way to give fresh new life, a fresh new start to your cells of your body. We just gave them an opportunity to get stronger, the bones to get stronger, and while strong, now they're still flexible and elastic, they're pliant. So just notice that sense of strength with flexibility and strength with pliancy. And so we'll set an intention, sort of like an animal in the wild, that as you're walking today, you're aware of that sense of strength with flexibility and pliancy. Sometimes the body forgets the gains it's made and it goes back to an old pattern of limping or feeling tight. But I want you to really be aware of the fact that you have the strength and more flexibility as you go through your next couple hours a day. Your body will perform as your image is. So we have an image of strong and flexible. So when you're ready, you're going to let your eyes open and come back into the room with much appreciation. Thank you so much. And I wanted to ask you guys, I'll send a note, if you'll just bring a little tennis ball, if you have some kind of ball next time, or something like that, a lacrosse ball will work fine. But we, I want to do our feet. And Betty, I think that's going to help with what you were talking about with your knees. So we, we'll do something to roll out our feet as well. You're going to love it. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Bye. Happy week.